This is a follow-on video from the last one in the playlist. It's going to look at Python's ID function again and talk about the fact that Python variables are treated differently compared to other programming languages. We looked at this particular program here in the previous video where A is assigned 7, then we print the value of A and then we print the ID of A and when the program runs we can see we get this output here which clearly shows that we're printing the value of A and we print the unique identifier for the variable A. And when this was modeled, we had this execution space and within the execution space, we had two things being created where one held the value of the variable A and the other held the unique identifier for variable A, which is here. And this points to the value of seven and they are said to be bound together and all of this here became the variable a and we looked at variations of this particular theme here which involve the execution space and this gives you a good visual clue as to what's actually happening inside python of course we would really need to get under the bonnet properly if we wanted to really know what was happening remember this is just a model what I'm going to do in this video is introduce you to another model that's frequently used when discussing Python variables. Here is the same Python program we looked at a moment ago. And when this executes, we get the output that you can see appearing here. And the output is as it was a moment ago when we looked at the model associated with this program when we talked about the execution space. Another way in which we can represent this particular program is to say that when we have a being assigned seven the following relationship is declared where we have two fields we have an ID field and we have a value field and the value is seven as you would expect because we're saying a is assigned seven and the ID field is holding this unique identifier here consequently when we print a we're actually printing this value to the 7 and when we print the ID of A we're actually printing this value as you can see here but this overall pairing is then given a label as you can see here and this label is said to be the name now in other programming languages you wouldn't have the ID and the value somehow joined like this you would just usually think of the value of a variable as being 7 and you would treat it as some kind of box which I myself have done earlier in the particular playlist but this is a model that I would recommend that you take forward because this one doesn't really talk about execution space and doesn't talk much about pointers to various places within the computer's memory it's saying look when I create a variable it's not just something that has a value it's something that also has an ID in truth I could have added a third field to this called the type field but I'm keeping it simple just for the time being but what we can really see here is we have this relationship where we have a value and an ID and the whole thing is noted by this name which we can see is a label attached to this so when we want to print a we say right well this is the thing that's labeled a this is the label this is the value that's what I'm going to print now if I want to print the ID of a well where is it well I'll locate it via this label that's the ID and I'll put this ID to the screen I think what I'd also like to point out here you see we can print a directly we can get at the value directly in this print statement but when we got at the ID we had to go through this ID function and that's something we can worry about much later in the playlist but I think it's worth pointing out at this particular point let's use the notion of a label to help us describe what's going on with this particular program here when this program runs this is the output we will get but let's see what happens when we go through each line of this particular program when we do a is assigned seven what we will get we will get this occurring we can see that the value is seven and this is the unique identifier for the variable a now because this represents a we're going to label it as you can see here when we now go on to do this one which is b is assigned 56 something similar will happen we'll have a pairing here created and you can see this is the value of 56 and this is the identifier for the variable b and of course we now label this with b so when i come to print a we locate the label we know this field here is the value so that gets printed here when we come to print b we locate this label we know this is the value 
so we print that value to the screen. When we now print the ID of A, we know this is the label, we know this is the ID, so that ID, you can see, is printed here. When we now come to print the ID of B, we locate the label, we know this is the ID field, and that unique identifier for B is printed to the screen. Let's now consider this particular program here. When this executes, we get this as the output. And you can see that we have A is assigned 7, B is assigned 7. Then we print A and B, and you can see we get their value here as 7, 7. And here we print the ID of A and the ID of B. And when that goes at the output, we can see that the ID is the same. Now we discussed this in the previous video in the series, and we looked at two models to help explain why the ID of A and the ID of B are the same. So let's now consider it from the viewpoint of this label we've been attaching. So we come on to A is assigned 7. So we will get this. We will get the value of 7 and we will get the unique identifier for the variable A. So this now is labelled A. When we now come on to this line, which is B is assigned 7, Python says, look, I've already got something with the value of 7. I'm not going to create another value of 7. I'm going to attach a label to this, which is label B. Consequently, we now have the situation where labels A and label B are both attached to the same pairing within Python. So when I now come to print A, we locate the label for A, which is clearly this one. We then get at the value, and that value is printed here. When we print the value of B, we go and find the label, which is this one. And of course, it's attached to the same pairing. So it locates this value and prints it to the screen. When we now print the ID of A, we locate the label. This is the ID. So that ID gets printed to the screen. When we print the ID of B, we locate the label. This is obviously the field for the ID, and we print that to the screen. Consequently, we can see that the ID of A and B is the same in this particular case. Whereas in the previous program, when we had A being assigned 7 and B being assigned 56, they had their own individual pairings and therefore had their own ID. But here we can see they share the ID because Python says, I'm not going to create another variable that has the value 7. I've already got it, so I'm going to reuse that one. Now, this is different to other languages or many other languages whereby you would treat a variable as a box. You would have two separate boxes here, one for A and one for B. But with Python, that relationship does not happen as you can see by this modeling here. Let's have a look at another program and it will show us something similar. Here you can see I've said let x is assigned 9 and then y is assigned x. And when we print x and y and print the ID of x and y, this is the output we will get. So let's have a look at what happens when we have x is assigned 9. Well, we will get this pairing here where we can see that 9 is clearly the value and this is the ID. And of course, we will label this as x. Now, when we then come to here to say y is assigned x, what will happen is this. We give it the same label. So now this pairing has the label of x and has the label of y. Consequently, when we come to print x and y, we can see that they are both 9. And when we come to print the ID of x and the ID of y, we can see the ID is the same because both x and y share the pairing consequently they share the id now let's consider this program here and you can see that this bit is exactly the same as the program we've just been concerned with and what i've done i've added to the end of the program this here where on this line you can see i've said let x be assigned 12. now when this program executes this is what we will get here we will get this output now let's have a look at why this output actually occurs in the way in which it does. Well, the first thing we're going to have a look at, x is assigned 9. And clearly, this is what we will get. We will get the value of 9, and we will get the ID, as you can see here. And this is then given the label of x. 
Then y is assigned x, and we've already been looking at this a moment ago. Consequently, this will get the label of y. And when we come to print x, y, as you can see by these two lines, this gets printed twice here, one for the x and one for the y, because this 9 is shared between the x and the y. In other words, x and y label the same value. When we now come to print the ID of X and print the ID of Y, as shown by these two lines, then this gets printed. Consequently, we can see the two IDs printed here and we can see they're the same. They're the same because X and Y are both labeling the same pairing. Now, when we come onto this line, which is X is assigned 12, this is where Python differs from another programming language because many people would say, ah, oh, what will happen now is this 9 will change to 12. Now, if that did happen, it would mean that y now would also be 12. But y was set up here to be the same as x. And at the time of this particular assignment statement, x was holding the value of 9. So what Python will do, it'll say, right, well, I haven't got a 12. There is no 12 value anywhere, so I'm going to create it. And it creates another pairing with 12 and with an ID. Consequently, X is no longer attached to that pairing. It's now going to be attached to this one here. So when I now come to print X, we locate the label. We can see that the value is 12. And this value gets printed here. We then come on to print Y. We locate the label for y, which is this one. That's the value, 9. So 9 gets printed here. Now when we print the ID of x, we locate the label. We know this is the field that holds the ID. So this ID now gets printed here. We now print the ID of y. So we find the label, which is this one. This is the ID field. And we can see that that now gets put here in the printout and we can see quite clearly that the id of y and the id of x are now different and in fact if you look carefully you can see that the id of y here and here is the same because that hasn't changed we've created a new value 12 and we've said right now you are going to have the label for x attached to you but y was left unchanged of course, you may be asking yourself the question, but why does Python do this? Why does it seem to make things a little complicated? Because surely a variable is just something where you store a number. Well, it is. But you can see with Python, it does things differently. Now, there are good reasons for this. But this video was to point out what Python does. The reason why it does it, well, we're going to leave that for later in the playlist. Finally, you will often heard it said that Python does not have variables, it has names. And when you hear that, what they're really saying is Python has a relationship between a value and an ID. And also, we'll see later, types. And the name comes about from the fact that we label these relationships. In other words, Python variables are not in the traditional sense that it's a box in which you shove values and when you come along and put a different value in the box, the old value is lost. You can see here that it doesn't work in that particular way. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.